Well, good evening to all of those who are with us and who are now joining us. Uh, appreciate you all being here. Uh, this evening, our topic is on mindfulness, discovering our true self. And uh, I'd like to, uh, you know, start by saying that if anyone would like to join in, you can feel free. Uh, by way of introduction, my name is Chris. I am a counselor, a life coach. Uh, I'm an author and speaker. And I do a couple blabs a week. Uh, usually I am here uh, with John, but you, uh, but he is currently unavailable. So it is me for this evening. Um, but uh, you can find out more about me over at my uh, website. And the website is lifesjourneyblog.com. And uh, looks like we have a question here as to, am I going to give lessons about meditation? Um, yes, we will talk about meditation. Uh, because when we look at what is meditation and trying to discover who our true selves are, those two uh, really go hand in hand. So hopefully I will answer those questions for you. Um, going with the name of uh, infinity. And uh, if you have any direct questions about meditation, uh, you know, feel free to uh, either write them down or feel free to, uh, you know, jump into our open seat. I'd like to talk about uh, mindfulness because mindfulness has been a big part of my life. Uh, as a counselor, uh, mindfulness is something that I had come to use with my clients. Uh, didn't always call it mindfulness, but every time that I was working on getting my clients to look at, you know, who they feel that they are, trying to get them to focus in on uh, looking at the present. Uh, it was really what we now call mindfulness, uh, at least in, you know, the more of the psychotherapeutic fields, uh, you know, that's what it's being called. So um, that's what I've been doing. Now, what is mindfulness? Just a very quick catch up for everybody. Mindfulness goes by a lot of different uh, terms, but mindfulness for me is making a conscious effort to stay in the present moment, and we do that without judgment. So what we mean by that is we don't live in the past, we don't live in the future, uh, all that we really have is the now. And we want to live in that now, experiencing that now, experiencing all that it has, uh, the good, the bad, the ugly, the beautiful, whatever that may be, that's what we want to experience. In the experiencing of the now, that's when we really come to terms with learning more about who we are and what is, uh, I guess, more deeply our purpose in life. So what I was going to focus on today is on discovering our true self. And I know that's a big topic. That's a topic that, you know, is uh, really one that, um, you know, is tough to define. You know, how do I know who I really am? Do we ever know who we really are? What we really want to begin to focus on, if we want to find some inner peace in our lives, if we want to focus on learning how to live life uh, more joyfully, uh, live life more present, in doing so, we're going to find out who we are. Uh, we have a question here. What is the reason of life? I wish I knew exactly what the reason of life is um, because, 
well, I'd probably write a book and become famous and go on all the talk shows. But uh, that's a, a very good question. So what is the reason of life? Um, maybe uh, for the one asking the question, I mean, what are some of your thoughts on, you know, what is the reason of life? Uh, if anybody else wants to chime in, um, you know, I can definitely address that. Um, because that's something that I think we all strive toward. You know, why are we here? What is the point uh, of us being here? For me, I don't have the complete answer as to why are we here. I don't even know for sure why I'm here. But if I focus myself on the moment, I know that in this present moment, I'm sharing some of my experiences, some of my learning with the people who are listening to this. That's what I'm doing right now. What is my overall purpose in life? Uh, that's a good question. I would hope that the purpose in life for me is to do more good than harm to positively affect more people than I may end up hurting, to, in some small way, make a difference in the world. I think if, if we maintain that focus, then we can really find out, what am I here for? I'm not going to say, though, in, in answer to the question of what is the reason of life in total, I don't know what everyone's reason for being here would be. As I mentioned, I'm hoping that's what my reason is. What we need to do is find out what is our reason. But in the chaos of where we find the world, uh, when we look at what recently happened in Paris and in Beirut, and look at all of the ills of the world, what we really tend to find is a lot of people who feel hopeless, people who do question why we're here, question if peace is ever possible, where is there good? All of these questions. I really believe this is part of what it means to discover our true self. So when we're living in a world that appears to be chaotic, what can I take from this world? What can I leave with this world? As I reflected on the happenings over the weekend and, you know, really taking a look at all the things that are happening in this world, uh, in this country, in the U.S., in, uh, you know, Europe, the Middle East, all of these areas, I believe that when we focus ourselves in all of this, what we end up getting is a sense of overwhelm, helplessness, victimhood. Because we're bombarded with too much all at once. So how do we tackle that? Well, in trying to discover who I am, what we really need to start to work on in, in tackling this is to take moments in our own lives. And I would suggest this, you know, daily, a couple times a day, maybe find those times that it works for you. Uh, you know, maybe in the morning, midday, evening, but find times in the day when you can pause for at least 10 minutes, a little longer would be nice. But if you can pause for at least 10 minutes, close your eyes, take some deep breaths, really look at what am I feeling right now? What am I doing? What am I thinking? The more that I can reflect on that present moment of all the things that are going on inside of me, all of those aspects that are going on inside of me, what I'm seeing around me, what I'm feeling, what I'm thinking, all of those things that are happening, that's part of who I am. That's making up me. So now I can take those moments of me, maybe I've learned something new about me, and how do I move forward with that? 
for me, I, I wrote up a reflection uh, that I posted this uh, weekend uh, about coping with, you know, the stressors uh, of all that's happening in the world. And one of the things that I look at is how can I refocus instead of looking at the world, how do I change my perspective and say, it's not the larger world, but my world, not in a selfish way. So I'm not saying it's my world, me, myself, my world, my family, my work world, my social world, my community. That's my world. In that world, what is it that I can do different to make it a better place? I'm not saying this as a pie in the sky thing. I know that personally in discovering who I am in trying to figure who that I am, I know that my limitation is I can't do anything that's happening outside of my country. I can't do anything that's happening outside of the state that I'm living in in my country. But what I know that I can do is that the people that I interact with, the people that I'm closest to, the people in my smaller community, I do know that I can do things that could hopefully enhance them, could hopefully enhance the community. And if I do those things in making a difference, then what I'm hoping to do is spread a bit more peace. If one person can feel better about themselves, then they can interact with another person and that makes them feel better about themselves, so on and so on. How does that affect what's happening in the world? I don't know. But I know that if I just stand back and say, I'm powerless to do anything that's happening in the world, then at least for me, I'm going to feel way too overwhelmed. I need to feel like I'm doing something. And that's my encouragement to everybody. What can we do in our own world that makes a difference? So for me, when I looked at this topic of, you know, discovering our true self, I think when I reflect on who am I really, a lot of what I reflect on is who am I in relation to what I'm doing? And I'm not talking about my profession. What I'm talking about is what am I doing that's making a difference in other people's lives? Um, it looks like we have another question about what is reality. This is getting really philosophical here. I actually love it. I, I studied philosophy. I, I actually love uh, these questions. Um, we'll, we'll get to what is reality. And again, if people want to chime in, what, what do people think, you know, reality is? Uh, you know, part of Blab is the community. So if anyone wants to type in a question or, or uh, you know, we have an open seat and uh, to join me, you know, definitely feel free. As I was mentioning, though, you know, in the doing, in what I'm capable of doing to help out the world around me, that's the focus that I need to look at because then at least I know I'm doing something. I'm not just sitting back, but it also helps me to find out who I am. So am I a person who is going to sit back? Am I a person who's going to give? That's going to depend on circumstance. But I also think when we look at, you know, who are we, part of that uh, lesson, part of that reflection really needs to be what are the feelings going on inside of me? What parts of me do I like? What parts of me do I not like so much? Uh, and when I take a look at those, and I do those by staying in this present moment, in looking at those, I can come to a deeper understanding then of who I am. And I see some more people are joining us. I appreciate that. Again, if anybody wants to jump in on the topic, you are more than welcome. Uh, a lot of this is about learning from each other, not just from me. 
which also goes in with this topic of discovering our true self, because the other way that I, I've looked at for mindfulness uh, leading us into our true self is the reflection that we receive from other people. So when you look at who are the people that you spend the most time with, that's going to tell you a bit about who you are. What do people say about you? That helps you to find out who you are. So really, we can't, at least I don't think we can, and I'm open to hearing about it, but I don't think we can really learn about who we truly are apart from other people. As social beings, part of you know what we're about is being social. And in being social, that's where we can feel like we're accomplishing things, where we can learn about who we are by what we accomplish, and to learn about who we are from those experiences. Each experience that we have is going to help us to understand a bit more about myself. For me, I think the bottom line is we're going to constantly change. We don't stay who we are. The more that we learn about ourselves, the more that we can learn something new, the more we interact with other people, the more we learn something new. Um, I would say to this next comment, um, we're a miracle. Can we do miracles because we're a miracle? I'm, I'm going to agree with that. Definitely, I'm going to agree we're a miracle. Apart from any particular religious belief anyone may hold, I definitely would believe that we are a miracle. All of life on this earth, this earth in general, this universe, definitely a miracle. Miracle in the sense that it's something out of the ordinary, something that one would not expect. <clears throat> I think even some people in, in the scientific world would admit that when uh, we take a look at, you know, the universe and the world and, and when we look at, you know, the, the seemingly um, non I don't even know how to say probable, the probability that this earth would have formed in the exact timing at the exact space in the exact way that can support us. Uh, that's a miracle in and of itself. Um, now, do we have uh, powers um, to cause miracles? Depends what you define as a miracle. But I would say yes. You know, what are those times that humankind has gone above and beyond in creating a better place for other people? What are those times that uh, humans have done the impossible uh, to save other people? Uh, you know, what are those times when, you know, firefighters and, and police and any other rescue units, you know, run into danger on purpose to save people? To me, that's the wider aspect of what a miracle is. And that, in my mind, is a real example of living mindfully. When you are somebody such as, you know, a, a first responder who is going to run toward danger to save others, that's living in the moment. If you weren't living in the moment, human nature would say, run away. Everyone else is running away. You need to run away. Because we would go back and say, well, history tells me it's dangerous. We can look at the future and say, you have a family. What if something happens to you? But living in that moment, the first responder, all their thought is, how do I save people? Right now, how do I do it? In my mind, not only is it an, an example of being mindful, but that's also a miracle, at least for me. I'm open to discussion, other points of view, but I think when we live mindfully, then living mindfully allows us to experience miracles. It allows us to see 
what's happening around us in a deeper sense that we can then discover all that is happening. It's when we're rushing through life, which most of us do, myself included, when we rush through life is when we end up missing those miracles. When we end up saying to ourselves, you know, well, where is the miraculous? Where is the good in this world? If we stop for a moment and reflect on what we're doing, what we're experiencing, we're going to find it. Uh, we have another question. Did I know what's the first thing that existed in the universe? I personally don't. I don't know if the person asking the question knows and wants to know if I know. Um, if you know, please let me know. Um, all I know from my little uh, intro to science is uh, the Big Bang Theory is, is one of the theories out there. But I, I've heard that there's some other theories and some of the science shows, uh, you know, that, that I've watched. Um, but what I do know is, you know, we exist. Here we are. And where did we come from? Well, my faith life tells me where we came from. Uh, what is our purpose? As I mentioned, to be the best that we can be to do good uh, wherever we can do that. So uh, what came first in the universe is kind of like, you know, saying, did the chicken or the egg come first? Um, I don't know. That's a nice mindful reflection, though, as to, uh, you know, what came first. But I think, you know, in, in looking at those miracles, you know, part of what I would say in mindfulness and mindfully reflecting on who am I and learning about me is in changing perspective. When I can change the perspective in looking at how I look at me, change the perspective in how I see the world around me and pause in my busyness to do that then in changing that perspective, I'm going to learn something about me. Again, looking at the tragedy of this weekend, and I hate to keep bringing that up, but, you know, it just happened. But, you know, as I talk to, you know, friends of mine, you know, we reflect on, well, is there any good in this world anymore? Um, you know, well, where is God in this? You know, so God must not exist because, you know, look at all, all the people who were, uh, you know, brutally killed for no reason. And those are tough questions. I don't have a direct answer. I have some answers, uh, some ways that I reflect that in my own mind. But one of the things as I reflected on it that I, I was beginning to change my perspective and come to understand I don't know for sure where God is in all that happens in the world, but I do know that we hear some examples. I heard a story of uh, one of the terrorists ended up not uh, carrying out his plot because he, I forget, he either got there too early or got there too late or he, he messed up something. Well, in a perspective shift, I can say, might that have been God's hand in that? Might that have been part of what stopped more senseless deaths? Was God's hand in having that person get confused and they showed up at the wrong time and couldn't carry out what they were supposed to carry out? There could be many stories of that. There could be those stories, you know, people saying I was supposed to be at that concert or I was supposed to be there. And for whatever reason, you know, I, I missed it. Uh, that to me is part of the miracles. That to me is part of does God work in our lives in ways that if we don't pause and look at things differently, we're going to miss. It's a question. I don't have the full answer. Um, in my faith life, that that's something that I believe. But I also know that if I get caught up in the complete busyness of everything, I might fail to see that perspective. Um, 
Let's see, we have another comment here, a uh, person quoting Einstein. Uh, let's see, there are only two ways to live your life. One is as though nothing is a miracle. The other is though everything is a miracle. Hmm. Brilliant man, Einstein was. Uh, and then the question is, do you agree with Einstein? Um. Oh, do I agree with Einstein? Yeah, I I would say that, let's see, you know, is that nothing is a miracle or everything is a miracle? Yeah, I on, on the surface of it, I, I definitely would agree. I don't know if anybody else wants to chime in on that, whether they agree, disagree otherwise. Um, but I can't imagine what life would be like if I just assumed that nothing was a miracle that everything was just planned out or everything was just random. Uh, I, I tend to want to believe that things that do happen in this world within us, within our lives, uh, is definitely miraculous. Um, as I mentioned earlier, I think just the fact that we exist uh, is a miracle in and of itself. So would I agree with that statement? Yes. Um, you know, the more that I practice mindful meditation, the more that I try to focus on the world around me, uh, I would say the more miracles that I see. We really need to focus on, you know, what is a miracle? For some people, it, it would be strictly, you know, something that a spiritual being is going to do to humans on earth. I don't disagree with that, but I also like a broader definition of a miracle that it's anything that's outside of the ordinary. And as I mentioned, I think just the fact that we are alive is outside of the ordinary. I think the miracle is the fact that the earth continues to spin and we have sunsets and sunrises. To me, that's a miracle. You know, sometimes I reflect on, you know, thinking of what were the first humans who were living during the day trying to figure out what this world is all about and then all of a sudden the sun slowly descends. Now, of course, the earth, sun isn't moving. We are. But anyways, so you just wonder as they kind of went about their day, what was that first sunset and evening like for them to be placed into this darkness? I tend to think as I reflect on that, they had no idea that sun was going to come back. I don't know what they would have thought. I know I would have been scared. Total darkness. Where did this thing go? To then, over time, all of a sudden, up, it slowly rises. Is that not a miracle? If we can view the world in that sense, if we can really get in that moment and look at that miracle that every day, that sun goes down, and in the morning it comes back. Again, I understand the science that the earth spinning, not the sun moving. Just bear with me. That takes some faith, and within that faith is where we can also discover more about who we are. Can I have faith? that ultimately things will work out. Now, they may not work out the way that I want them to work out, but ultimately, do I have faith that things will work out? Am I open to what that means? Those, I believe, are the questions that really need to be pondered when we're talking about discovering who am I that I'm really trying to ponder within myself, what am I going to believe in, in the sense of, can I find a hope that even in things going on uh, around us in the world, the way that they are, can I still see the good and therefore have hope? 
the world in some areas may be falling apart, but that sun still comes up. The world may be falling apart in areas, but there's still people who are rushing towards the danger to save people. There's still, in my view, the miracles that are happening that a particular terrorist can't commit to what he was going to do because he was late. Those are the miracles and the good in the world that keeps me going. And then when we start saying, well, then, you know, how do we discover who we are? How do we make that focus that we can find the good? I'm not saying this, that we ignore the negative. The negative and the problems in the world exist. We're not ignoring them. What I'm suggesting in mindfulness is how do I look at them from a different perspective? How do I see them for what they are? Acknowledge that that's happening in the world. Acknowledge how that makes me feel. And then begin to discover who I am by saying, so now what am I going to do about this? And when I can find out what am I going to do about this, that needs to be something that I can do close to home. What can I do in my family, in my workplace, in my community? If we all did that, we would have a different world. Now, you might say that's just Pollyanna. That can never happen. I would want to challenge you and say, why can't it? What is getting in our way? Uh, let see. We have another question popping up here. Uh, it says, can people live without religion? Or is the religion a must to find our true self? Hmm. Very good question. Again, I would just, uh, you know, challenge if anybody has any viewpoints, feel free to uh, type away or, uh, you know, request to join in. Uh, from my viewpoint, you know, can people live without religion? Uh, or is, you know, religion a must define ourselves? Before I fully answer that, let me make a distinction. Religion is a set of rules and doctrines and traditions that people follow that are based on, you know, what they have either been brought up with or what they want to follow. You know, so a religion would be, uh, you know, like an Episcopalian, Presbyterian, a Catholic, a um, Muslim, um, Jewish, that's your particular religion. What is a goal of a religion? I really feel the goal of the religion is to help people with these rules and these doctrines and these traditions to attain a higher sense of God. But this higher sense of God is we would call a spirituality. How do I live my life in more of a meditative, mindful way that I can discover how God interacts in my life, how I interact with God in my life? In other words, what is my relationship with God? Religion is going to help us to form that relationship. Religion is going to allow that relationship to grow to continue. But the key is that relationship, and that relationship is your spirituality. So I think to answer the question, the way that I would look at it is, can people live without religion? In its true definition, I would have to say yes, in the sense that if people attain a spiritual sense apart from the formal religion, yes. Can humans attain a spiritual sense minus a religion? I don't think so. There's always, uh, you know, exceptions to every rule. I don't think we can attain a spiritual sense without, uh, you know, first really involving ourselves in a religion and taking that religion to its end point, you know, and, and the relationship that you would have, you know, with the spiritual, with the God. Um, 
you know, so uh, let's see, as the person asked the question, is the religion a must to find ourselves? In my experience, not only in my personal life, but in, in people that I, I've worked with and my family, I would answer that first by taking the word must out of it. But is religion a way to find ourselves? Yes, most definitely. When we look at that religion, it gives us an identity. When I follow that particular religion's set of rules and doctrines and traditions, is giving me an identity. That identity helps to form who I am. That begins to form what is my true self. I can identify with that particular religion. That's who I am. The more I would invest myself in that religion, that religion itself should be guiding me toward that sense of something greater than myself. The more I understand a sense of something greater than myself, the more apt I am to see miracles, the more apt I am to have hope. Uh, and in that sense, I'm discovering a different self. Um, so then the person is asking, so can we deny the existence of God? The non-philosophical answer, sure. There, there's people who are atheists and agnostics who are going to deny uh, an existence of, of God. Um, now, in myself having the belief in God, I would say it's very hard for me to deny an existence of a God who I feel is is a vital part of who I am, is somebody who has placed within me a soul, and that soul is my connection with my God. In that sense, I can't deny myself. Uh, that's, that's a lot more philosophical. Um, but I would even tend to say that in the individuals who very deeply deny an existence of God, at some point in their lives begin to understand, but there is something greater than us. You know, I find it interesting that the scientists who are, uh, you know, working on, um, oh, I forget the name of it. It's, I think, where is it up in Sweden, Switzerland, whatever. Uh, they're trying to like split those atoms or do something about partly with the creation of the world and, and they came up with, I should know this stuff, but I didn't prep for this, but but the, they came up with, with uh, what they termed, what the scientists have termed, the God principle. Uh, they've come up with what they think is, you know, maybe the beginning piece of life, and they're calling it the God uh, principle. Even in that scientific viewpoint, they can't deny that there's something greater than us. For me personally, and again, anybody, you know, feel free to join in. But for me personally, even when you can look at the Big Bang Theory as creating the world, scientists are still stumped. So let's assume that the Big Bang Theory is true. It may well be true. I, I'm, that's not my field of, of expertise. But let's say that it is true. Scientists are still left with the question... So where did those particles come from? I think the more we keep asking the question of where did we come from? Where did the universe come from? Science is taking leaps and bounds to explaining the universe. But we're still not at that point of saying, but where did it come from? Where did that first particle or a couple particles that needed to bang where did they come from? Did they just come out of nothing? I don't know. We're left then with the question. So then to answer your question, you know, can we deny the existence of a God? I think if we even just logically expound on that, we still have to say there's pieces of this puzzle we don't know. 
And if we don't know, isn't it possible that there is a God? And I just throw that out because if science can't deny that, so science says, well, we don't know where they came from. So the next logical question would be, so then could it be a God, a spiritual being greater than all of us? If a scientist is being intellectually honest, they can't deny that. They're going to have to say, well, since I don't know where it came from, that is a theory that we would have to work with. That doesn't mean they agree with it, but we have to at least assume that that's a possibility because we can't deny it if we don't know what the cause actually is. Hopefully that's answering your question, uh, but that gets, you know, us a little more philosophical. But I would still say, though, you know, in answering that, that we're still focused on our topic of how do we discover our true self? Because it's in pondering these questions as to, you know, where does the universe come from? Where do we come from? Why are we here? Uh, since we're here, what do we do? Uh, since the world seems to be falling apart, how do we cope with it? In looking at all of those questions, the only way to begin to find answers, at least the way I look at it, is for us to spend moments in the day sitting still, taking inventory of what am I thinking, what am I feeling, what's going on around me. And as I do that, I can, if not answer those questions, at least ask those questions of myself. That's going to help me discover who I am. If I can sit still and feel what I'm feeling, while at the same time recognizing the miracles that are happening around me, and say to myself, why am I here? What is the point? I think even asking the question helps me to find out who I am. I don't know if we ever come to an answer. And and that's one of the reasons, you know, I came up with this topic um, because the wording of discovering our true self uh, uh, is on purpose. It's not just the, it's not the wording of mindfulness, you know, tells us who we are, or we didn't say, you know, mindfulness discovered our true self. Mindfulness, we're discovering discovering is the process. We continue to learn who we are. And I really do believe that we continue to learn who we are through our experiences, through asking these deep questions, trying to find the answers. But ultimately, as you know, we were talking earlier, it's in finding the hope and finding the good and trying to learn, you know, more about how I uh, live in the world and how I interact in the world, how I respond to the world is going to tell me a lot about who I am. And that's going to change over time. I don't know. I know we've had some more people join us. I don't know if uh, anybody has any other questions, uh, comments. Um, maybe somebody wants to type something or, uh, join into the open seat and uh, maybe share some of their views uh, on this. You are more than welcome to do so. Um, as I was mentioning earlier, for me at least, uh, part of doing you know this blab is to learn from other people. You know, I definitely don't have all the answers. I have my experiences, but I don't have everything. So. It's also learning from other people. I do appreciate the questions. Um, they took us a, a lot deeper and more philosophical than I was originally thinking of going, but I love philosophy and asking the deep questions. So I don't know if anybody has anything more to add to this. All right. Don't really want the dead air. And, and I think I've, uh, 
pondered all I'm going to ponder on this topic at the moment. Uh, so if uh, there is no one else with any uh, questions or comments, um, well, it looks like I may have another one coming through. Uh, so before I close out, let me see what this message is that's coming through. Um, okay. Uh, the question is if I can uh, send a recording of this. Um, yeah, and, and that's a, a good point. I, I appreciate uh, you wanting to do that. Actually, if you just go to my Blab page, uh, which is uh, just logging into Blab, and then uh, um, so it'd be blab.im slash life journey blog. Uh, that'll take you to my page. Actually, I can type this out for people, but on my page are the replays of uh, all of the uh, blabs uh, that I've done. There aren't that many yet, uh, but the ones uh, that I've done are posted there. So um, let's see. All right, I just sent out uh, the link. Uh, so clicking that link will um, bring you back to all of the ones that I've done, including this one. I think there's a, a little time lag uh, to get this one though, because the um, blab behind the scenes does some processing work and puts it all together. So uh, give it a little bit of time to find this one, but um, that's where you can find all of these. Just head over to my blab page and uh, you can uh, listen to any of them that you want to. Um, so, all right. So, uh, I think we are coming up on the end of this. Um, I appreciate everyone listening. I appreciate uh, you being here. Uh, please, if you like what you uh, hear, uh, please spread the word uh, about my Blab page. I uh, do a Blab every Monday at uh, 7 o'clock uh, Eastern time and another Blab on Thursdays at 8 o'clock uh, Eastern time. Uh, so feel free to uh, check back in onto my page. Um, also, if you want to reach me, my uh, professional webpage is lifesjourneyblog.com. All right. Thank you, everybody. And if anyone has any comments or suggestions for future topics, uh, please send them over to me and uh, we will definitely put something together for you. All right. Thank you and have a great evening, everyone.